find or learn from those situations. Places where we fell, we try not to repeat it. Where we were able to advance, we look at it and then we move much or we work harder on that to move further up. Amen. Amen. And then we understood from this that worship has been a time or in the Bible, worship was something that the people of God did. They presented items before God, be it a living thing, could be an animal or fruit or anything that they had, they presented to God as their act of worship. And in every religion, as we learn, we've got to understand that they all go through this process, the processes of sacrificing unto the God that they serve. But for us, we have a God in the Bible they were doing differently from what we do now. All because of Jesus who died on the cross. Hallelujah. But that does not stop us from doing what? Sacrificing unto God based upon the blessings that God has given to us. We may not at this time present an animal upon an altar. Yet we also have a principle whereby we, because we love God, we can also present something from our heart unto God. We learned from the Old Testament how they did their stuff and we came to the New Testament and we also learned some stuff from there. And these sacrifices, we understood that it will either be presenting our treasure, it will either be presenting our talent or what? Our time. Amen. And then we said, biblical history that we talked about deepens our understanding of God's character. When we study them, it deepens our understanding of God's character. It reveals God's nature and his faithfulness and love towards us. We also said that it provides guidance for our faith. It encourages our faith and trust in God. Biblical history, again, we said it gives us hope and perspective. Hallelujah. And it inspires us as we worship or praise God. When we refer to these historical events that took place, it helps us to build much on our walk with God. Amen. And so the Bible made us understand in Proverbs chapter 22 verse 28 that we should not remove the ancient landmark which our fathers set for us. We are not to remove those ancient landmarks. One of these landmarks that the Bible talked about, which we are learning, is the landmark of sacrifice and worship. Amen. Don't let us remove the ancient landmark which our fathers have set. If we let go of it, it wouldn't be good for us. And we said uh, to worship God is to demonstrate our love to him. And by so doing, it requires a sacrifice. And we also said a sacrifice is to surrender a possession as an offering to our God. And to the others, to their the deity that they worship. Are you here? And all these offerings that we talked about. We need to do it from a willing heart. You don't have to be forced to offer a sacrifice. When that happens, that is not a sacrifice. And a sacrifice must be, if you can remember, it has to be valuable and precious. Sacrifices has to be valuable and precious. If it is not valuable to you, it wouldn't be precious or it wouldn't be a sacrifice. It has to be valuable. It has to be precious. And we need to do it willingly. Paul said to the Romans that we need to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. And he did not stop there. He said, holy and acceptable unto God. Amen. 
So all these things put it. Anytime you, you, someone gives out or do a sacrificial offering to any, it has to be a valuable thing to the person. Yet they give it out. That is what a sacrifice is. And last week, we or the previous week and last week, we then took the subject uh, worshiping God with our substance or with our treasure. Amen. And we said that David, at his time that he was sacrificing unto God, he made a statement in 2 Samuel 24, verse 24. He said that, I will not offer anything unto God that does not cost me. So when we have to do a sacrifice or give to God, it must be valuable and it must be precious. I can't just give anything unto God. It is not what I don't need, that is what I present. It has to be valuable to me. It doesn't matter how much it is, but it has to be valuable. It is not giving a change. When you do that, it is not valuable. Amen. Amen. And I told you the other day, most people go to church. I'm not saying it is wrong. If that is a valuable amount or something you have to give to support God's work, it is between you and God. But I have come to realize that it is not only here, but every church you go, the children of God, their most, most, most valuable amount of money they give to God is one dollar. Which sometimes I don't believe so. Amen. The poor is giving one dollar. The rich is giving one dollar. That is between you and God. But our sacrifices must be precious and valuable. Yesterday I saw something. I told my wife that I'll say this anywhere I stand. I, 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 I just looked at it and I, I said, we went to, to the bank and in the evening there was this guy that was sitting in front of the bank begging for money. And one guy went to the bank. He came out and he gave the guy some money. The guy that was sitting at the bank on the floor, a beggar, when they handed the money to him, he took his wallet (laughs) out of his pocket and put the money in his wallet. Amen. Amen. I said, wow. Even beggars are now even advancing. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Listen. When we have to offer a sacrifice to God, it must be valuable. It must be precious. David said, I will not offer anything unto God that does not cost me. Solomon, yes, last week we saw that when he got to a point that he was put on the throne first, he went to the place of worship and instead of him bringing out one one animal, one uh, um, sheep or one uh, um, oxen unto God, he de- sacrificed at that time thousand sheep unto God. And when he had finished doing that, that night the Bible says, God was so surprised, could not even hold up. God did not send an angel to go speak to Solomon. God himself came to Solomon. He was wondering, what has this guy done? And, and, and he then asked Solomon, listen, I just can't believe myself. What at all do you want? What do you want me to do for you? Remember I told you from um, Psalm 50 verse 5. God said, bring uh, bring together, bring them, people that I have a a, a, a commitment or I have, uh, um, what do you call it? Covenant, thank you. Children, my children that I have a covenant with them. Through sacrifice. And so God through sacrifice in a way he has a covenant with us. And you know God does not ask us to give uh, something. God does not ask us to present any offering. He doesn't need them. It is everything on earth is God. Yet we do these things to prove to God or to show to him that we love him. So when you give to God it is an expression of our love towards God. Amen. 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 
When we give, it is our expression of our love towards God. It is not to prove, it is not to show forth, but to show to God that I love you. Solomon did not end there as we saw last week. He further went ahead and at a time when the temple was being dedicated, he came out and gave thousands of animals. Thousands of animals. Second Chronicles chapter 7. He gave so much unto God. Amen. Amen. All these, we learn them from the subject, worshiping God with our treasure. And then we also saw one man in our days when people were struggling to give tithes or give 10% of their income to God. This man said to himself, no, I'm not going to give. I'm not going to go do that. I would rather give God 90 and, and take 10. I don't know whether you did your research. I gave you his name and I told you to go look for it. What did the apostles, the days of the apostles, what did they do? They gave all. So church, giving unto God, not giving for money to God to spend, to take to the grocery or to, no, 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 no. It is thinking about God and supporting what God likes. As we live here on earth. And we have to do it willingly. Don't be forced to do it. Hallelujah. All these principles were noted. And today, here we are. We are here because of some things that we did days ago. Whether bad or good. Any action that we took some years ago, some days ago, month ago, has brought us this far. Whatever we are going through in life now is all because of how we handled yesterday. Amen. Amen. And so when we look at our path or our past, we can change things to help us pursue a better future in us. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. God said to the people. Stand in the ways and see and ask for the old path where the good way is and walk in it. Ask for the old path where the good way is and walk in it. Ask for the old path, the old landmark. Ask for it, look for it, search for it where it is. And when you have found it, walk in it. And this is where we are today. I want you to know, or today I want to bring before you that the old path has the good way. The old path leads to our rest, as the Bible says. The old path brings tranquility or peace to us. The old path establishes an intimate relationship between us and God. And that was the path that the old people took. When they were so excited when it was time for them to go before God and offer a sacrifice. Today, man has to be forced. They do anything and yet they will say we love God and nothing proves that we love God. This day we are moving further on the subject worshipping God with our talent. Worshipping God with our what? Talent. Or our gifts. When God created you and I, God gave each and every one of us a, a form of a gift or a talent. We all don't have the same gifts or the same talent. We do have something. And that is what we need to look for. And then we can use that to worship God. Hallelujah. Jesus gave a parable in Matthew chapter 25. We've all held up, heard about this before. We call it the parable of the talent. Where a rich man was leaving his... Um, Land and he called all his servants and he gave them each gifts. He gave them each according to their ability. He gave it to them according to their ability. 25 15 says, And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. When he gave it to them, he did not tell them what to do with it, he just gave them talents and he went away 
The Lord has given you and I talent, gift. When we, are, we were created, God gave us something. Some people are able to use their talent so well, others look at it and think that it, it does not worth anything. And so the scripture says that this guy, this um, rich person came back from the journey some years after and called all these people together. And they gave account of what he gave to them. The first one said, you gave me five and I'm able to make five more. The next one came, he said, you gave me two and I've, I've been able to give two. And he said, good, you've done so well. And the third one came and he said, I, I knew you, you, you are a person who is so wicked and you, so you, you pick up from where you have not sown. I was so afraid that when you gave it to me, I did not use it. I instead went and hid it. And here it, it, it is. And that probably could be the character that many of us have chosen to walk on. This man that chose not to worship or use his talent to serve the rich man, the scripture says that he was cast out. Amen. Amen. It is so important that we put to good or use every talent that God has blessed us with. Some people will get there. Some people have the talent of talking. Oh, they can talk so well. Some people can talk. They can really talk. Last week, I told you about my dad. My dad was one of those. That is why he ended up, he, he ended up becoming a politician. Oh, yes, my dad, I told you last week. He went to the Bible school, finished Bible school, had everything, and ended up becoming a politician. If you don't know, I can give you a little secret. My dad was one of Dr. Kwame Krumah's ministers. Amen. He could talk. I walked with him one time, and there were these students that were making demonstration, and all teachers were, <laughs> were, were running away from the school. All of a sudden, this man just walked straight into the demonstration, went to the assembly hall, and there was no one there, called one person, said, go and bring all the students here. I'm here waiting for them. The students came, and then he started talking, and he started talking, and he started talking. Those people that were so angry and destroying stuff, I don't know where that thing came from. All of a sudden, they all became so calm. And they were, all went back to their, um, their rooms. Some people know how to talk. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12 verse 4 to 8 says, For us we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are our one body in Christ and individual members of one another. Verse 6 says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. Hallelujah. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. Use what? Use the gifts that God has given to us. Use the gift that God has given to us. Use the gift that God has given to us. And he says, if the gift is to prophesy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. If the gift is ministry, let us use it in our ministry. If that gift is to teach, let us teach and teach well. Not to teach just to draw attention to ourselves, but to teach to draw attention to the God whom we serve. Amen? Amen. Today, people, when you see them with the microphones, all they do is to make people know that I am big. And so all of a sudden, all, all the time, people, instead of focusing on God, they focus on men. He says, he who exhorts, he must, in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So all these things are gifts. So giving is a gift to some people. Some people giving is a gift. That doesn't, it's like evangelism. Some people are called to be evangelists. Yet we are all called to evangelize. Some people have been gifted to give. Yet we are all called to give. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. This same scripture, when you read it from the New Living Translation, it says, In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So these gifts are given to us so that we can do things well for the human race. If God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. Verse 7 says, if your gift is serving others, if your gift is serving others, so serving others is also a gift, which some people do have it. Hallelujah. People with, you know, haven't you ever seen a nurse that you can actually tell this person is not fit in this work? There are some people, they just do their work all because they want money. But the heart is, there's others too, it, it comes from within. It's just there. It, it, they don't struggle. They, those people, it's a gift. He said, if it is serving others, serve them. What? Well, I am not the one writing it or I did not write it. I'm reading to you from the Bible. So if your gift is to serve, serve well. Because the master one day will come and ask whether you were able to use that gift or how you were able to use that gift. And he said, if your gift is to teach, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. It is giving, give generously. <laughs> if God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And with this, I'll say to the leaders of this house, if you have been called to be a leader, be responsible to that duty that has been entrusted to you. Don't just hold that title upon your neck and be walking around, I am this, I am that. No, no, no. That is not what or how or why God called you. You have been given a responsibility as a leader. So lead. Amen. A leader must do what? Lead. That is why they are called leaders. Are we here? Who am I talking to? Praise the Lord. My man say wish. I will not even look there. Praise the Lord. If you are leader, lead. Take that responsibility seriously. And you have a gift for showing kindness to others. Do it gladly. Do it gladly. So, you know, these are some gifts that we've talked about. The problem here now is people that have been given some specific gift, rather than using their gift, they look at other people's gift and they try to copy that gift and they make mistakes messing up stuff. Remember, we have to do it well. And the master expects us to come back with a profit. Hallelujah. Every one of us is given a gift. We all have a gift. And that gift is meant for us to serve one another. And as we use our gift in seven people, we might not look at it as very spiritual. Yet because we are using it to serve people to the glory of God, that is our act of worship. In Exodus chapter 36, when we started this subject, we said about it. When Moses called the people and told them that God has instructed us to build a, a tabernacle for him, the people with a willing heart, they, with joy, they all began to contribute to the construction of the tabernacle. And after they have brought everything necessary for the construction, then they went out to look for people that are talented that will be able to put things together and make the uh, tabernacle right and very beautiful. And in Exodus chapter 36 verse 1, it says that, And Basilel and Aholab, and every gifted artisan in whom the Lord has put wisdom and an understanding to whom how to do all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary shall do according to all that God has commanded. Verse 2. 
Then Moses called Basileah and Aholiah and every gifted artisan in whose heart the Lord has put wisdom. Everyone whose heart was stirred to come and do the work. So they went in to put gifted people, talented people, people that have that creative art, that they can really build something. Not amateurs, but, but people that have the idea. They know how to use a drill. They know how to use a hammer. They know how to use things. Not some of us, me, I'm talking about myself. Not some of us that can handle things and we can do it, but not according to how the professionals can do it. God wants us to do something right. And if we have to do it, we must do it and make it look good. That when people see, they can tell that this is for God. Remember what David said, I live in a house. I live in a palace, a mansion. And I'm enjoying myself and God lives in a tent. No, this isn't right. I have to change and bring God or build a temple for God. So listen, we, when it comes to us, we think about the best. When it comes to us, we want to build the best. When it comes to us, we want to take the best. But when it comes to doing things for God, we do it anyhow. It isn't right. Amen. Amen. We must use our talent very well. Rick Warren said, you don't have to always be doing something spiritual to bring God glory. Anytime you are using God's gift for his glory, it's worship. Anytime you are using God's gift to his glory, it is worship. So someone can come to the house of God and begin to vacuum, begin to sweep, begin to arrange chairs. And as the person does it, it's singing worship song, it's singing praise song, thanking God for the gift of cleaning and, and, and doing it and doing it and doing it. As you do these things, people may not see it, people are not aware of it, but God knows that this is an act of worship. And that is what we are talking about. I'm here to let you understand that there is an amount of a gift that God has planted in your heart and it is time for the church to rise up and use that gift to the worshiping of God. It is time we must move from becoming uh, pew warmers. Just come in, sit on the chair and make it warm and go out there thinking that there is nothing good in you. There is something precious, something gifted, something well, well designed by God that you are the only person that can do it and do it right. And that we must use it to worship him. Amen. Amen. That we must use to worship him. What did Peter say? say? What did Peter say? He said, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. First Peter chapter 4 verse 10. As each one has received a gift... Each one, we all have received a gift. Minister that gift to one another. That gift, minister it to one another. As good steward, a steward is someone that is taking care of someone's property. So a good steward, listen, a good steward, and I want to repeat that, a good steward, it did not just say a steward, but a good one. We say it means there could be a bad steward. The bad steward would do everything on the opposite. Not ministering it the right way, but we must be good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Praise Jesus. Oh, Lord, help us. Help us. Let me give you this and maybe I'll end here and next week we'll continue. There is this man or oh, child of God that I know of in a church in London. This guy lives very far from where the church was. And every time he goes to church alone, he just goes to church. And he does everything well and right when he goes to church. And then he saw that what he was doing was wrong. So he went and bought a van. It wasn't from the church, but he himself bought a van. 
and decided to put his friends in the van. Anytime it is for him to go to church. So every week he keeps calling his friends. Next week I'm picking you up. And then I'm picking you up. And then I'm picking you up. And this guy began to fill his van every moment that he was going to church. And he was transporting his friends to church every day. Here and then. May God give us this heart. Remember. God has a covenant with his children in sacrifices. He doesn't force us to do it. But when we willingly do it from our heart, not being pushed to do it, but when we sit and think about God, about his work, about souls, which is the heartbeat of God, the moment we begin to think about these things and how best we can do to bring souls to the kingdom and we act upon those feelings, it goes on to touch God. And everything that is needed by, by you will be provided by God. Amen. This guy, if I tell you how much and how God keeps blessing him, only God can tell. Amen. Only God can tell. I have two friends, again, very, so many years ago, so many years ago when we were in that region. I have shared this testimony and I will keep sharing it, or I'll keep sharing it, because this is what gives me motivation to do things for Jesus. In those days, I was then an instrumentalist. We sit and we, we, we do instrumentalist dance at their own work, and these people, we call them the tent makers. So when we go for fellowship, they were the guys that used to build a tent. And so there were about 40 of them. And my friends and I, instrumentalists, we pick them, we pack them. And one guy, that guy that even drives the instruments out, he's here. Not in this church, but in this city. And then I, anytime we were packing our instruments, I could see uh, something that these guys were doing. The moment they gather to build a tent, they hold their hands, they pray. And then they build the tent. When they are, we are done, they will pray and bring the tent down. They pull it down. They kept doing it. And then I realized that the number was reducing and it was reducing from 40. It came to about, uh, uh, that work which was meant for about 40 people came to about four or five, including these two friends of mine. But the holding of hands and praying to do that work, they kept that tradition. The work those two guys were doing were just mere carpenters. As I have shared this several times. They were just mere carpenters. And if you have been to my country before, you see that when the ladies or the mothers go to the kitchen, they have a kitchen stool they sit on to make food at the kitchen. How many of you are aware of what I'm talking about? Yeah. That is the type of work these two guys were doing. That is the level of the, the, the carpentry job. So they will just put these small things together, and people come in, buy it, and they sometimes even take some, go to the market and sell it. And one day it happened that they got an idea that carpenters were having a conference in London. So these two boys with stool-making technology went to the British Embassy and said to them that we have come to know that carpenters are having a meeting in London and we want to go. They did not struggle through it. The next thing was said to them that come at 3 p.m. for your visa. When people that own factories were rejected, people that had money in their accounts were being rejected. People who had nothing, just making stool, were given the, the right to travel abroad. Today, God has lifted them all up and has made them well. We are serving a God who is not like man, that forgets what we do to him. Because he always has a covenant with his people. I don't know who I'm talking to now. You have placed your gifts and you have put it in, 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 in a, cup, a, a, a closet and it is all covered with dust. Go back, take it, 
pray over it and begin to use it. I don't know what gift God gave to you. If it is the gift of cooking, pray and commit it unto God and serve people with your cooking. One day someone somewhere may eat that food that people disregard. And that person will realize that by eating your food, that is sanctified and anointed by the Holy Ghost, got a tumor taken out of the body, begins to shout, what have I eaten? And the people then begin to run to you, who is this? And that little thing that was on, on the street side begins to become, why? Because it, was, it is a gift that God has given to you. Don't hide it. Serve people with that which God has given to you. And though it may not be spiritual, as much as you are glorifying God with that gift that he has given to you, it is your act of worship. And for this I say, that will be your sacrifice unto God. Amen. 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 I will end here and continue next week because of our time. May God bless you. 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 Oh, God help us. May God bless you. God help us. In the name of